Welcome back, everybody, to the DPL Recap, where we go over what happened during last week's matchup here for the Due Process League. My name is Fel, also joined here by my two, uh, I guess, side men, not to both my right and my left, just to one of my sides, of course, is this direction. Yes, I managed to get that down over Hell camera yeah. as well. Both Boxy and Akazo here to, well, talk about, you know, what's gone on for quite some time, because it has been, I think, EK tallied up 13 days since we have done this recap, but now that we're back and ready to get this show underway, we might as well just cut right to the chase and start heading up into what we saw during the upper bracket matches. Boxy, why don't you take us through that? Okay, let me just uh, pull up the bracket. But yeah, uh, hi from my side as well. How are you all doing? Uh, do you want to do have an intro, EK? Do you want to say anything before we get through the matches? Well, let's just get right into let's, let's just Let's just get right to it. Okay. Uh, well, so last week, I'll, I'll just read the matches. And, you know, I wasn't here. I had some prior commitments. I had to be somewhere else. But uh, you guys watched the matches. Fellow even casted a few of them. So it's probably best that you speak about them. Uh, first one was Yakuza versus Rice. And it was a 7 0 for Yakuza. Uh, pretty expected, I think. But what do you guys think? Because you've seen the match. Yeah, pretty pretty expected for Yakuza versus Rise. I mean, they have not really found any success. They've won two rounds overall throughout the entire regular season. So I think that they are basically just fully committed to being sent to relegation, unfortunately. I don't think there is really any hope for them at this point, sadly. I mean, that sounds really harsh to say, but even if they win their next matchup, which is, I'll go and check the next uh, actual week or technically this week I should say it's versus Bingus one of the better yeah. teams in the upper league yeah I, I I don't think we're gonna see them even win that matchup they are gonna have to most likely play up against uh well really whoever wins actually uh, the playoffs for the lower bracket because I don't even think it's based off of uh seeding fully I think it's like what top four teams in lower bracket that end up going to their own playoffs and then just whoever wins that gets to play against the relegation teams and that's how it's done. I could be wrong, of uh, course. Maybe EK could fill me in on how yeah, it's properly it's, done there. For lower league season, it's the top two teams that go to relegations. Oh, but then okay. There's an additional qualifier tournament where the top two teams there go against the top two teams previously from the season. And then they get earned the right to fight against the upper league team that is sent to relegations. Okay. Yeah, EK, any thoughts on the match? Uh, I mean, who's arrived, that is? Uh, that, that's an interesting one because originally uh, Rise forfeited because they didn't have enough time because Merchant Merchant went to the car dealership to buy a car and then uh, uh -oh. they just couldn't get five players so they replayed that match actually this Friday. Um, oh okay. And Rise I just, saw some scores being sent to the yeah. DPL helper server and I was like, what is that? I but, okay. Let me change okay, the stats for that game. Yeah, okay. Next up was Global Breakout versus Rise, and again, 7-1. So, I guess with that match, Rise did double their, you know, total rounds won throughout DPL so far, so there's that. But again, I think it went pretty much as expected. Oh, oh, poor, poor, poor Daxi and Roby. <laughs> Unfortunately, yeah, the 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 Russian the Russian uh, Russian lexicon. Sorry, that's the the guy in the very bottom. That is a, actually a Daxi fun fact. Yeah, that just does not look like a fun game to play against there for YY. And a uh, lot of lot of top weapons as KR. Well, not really. It's only two, but it's uh, interesting to look at. So I guess they must have had more defender rounds to play with here, potentially based on uh, at least that stat. Perhaps I'm not quite sure to be honest, but at least we have the stats here to look at them. Do we have more stats throughout the other matches as well, EK, or is this just it. one we were able to find? Yeah, I, have it, I have it for all the upper leagues, but okay. I just cannot be asked to do the lower. <laughs> I cannot be asked to put in all the lower <laughs> I don't leagues, blame so. you. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't it is a lot you. of work to do manually by hand. We, you know, we totally get Probably it. a couple I could find, because I'm in a lot of the lower league discords, so it wouldn't be that difficult for me just to, wow. to read them off. Okay. Also, it's, also in the discord. it's also in this discord as well. I have it have its own section uh, okay you, all of it yeah. should be listed as well so okay yeah, well Are i guess next match uh gnomes versus yakuza and this is where it starts getting interesting right it was the only tie of the day oh man yeah oh man to go talk about that game and reminisce what i saw just watching the game i wasn't even casting the game but oh my god this was something to talk about. Firstly, the stats, 
Now, on paper, this does look mildly normal, I would say, for the variation of gnomes currently. Um, we've, we've talked consistently about how their current composition just does not work in the meta of due process right now because it's such a frag-heavy based game nowadays that it doesn't really favor teams that don't have a main fragger and originally that was mace until he moved into bingus that was the main honcho who went around and shot people and did a good job at doing that singular task he was a soldier but they don't have that person anymore their best player who we always talk about has to be reptar because he's very good at sniping in this game especially with the saber so he mostly does a lot of good damage but it's normally just him that does a lot of the heavy lifting then scooge is always that like just solid player as well those are the two people that we consistently talk about being the main people for the gnomes currently whereas you look at the opponent side for yy they're all just incredibly consistent all over 1k damage and they all just played their roles really well so until we see that hole filled for the gnomes they're going to probably keep either tying their games or just flat out losing them and the worst part about this matchup is towards the end of the game it was a 4v5 for YY, they only had four people, and it was already match point for the Gnomes, and they choked. That is just a red flag that the composition that they're running with right now is just not good, and they need to change it moving either into relegation or moving into playoffs because they're teetering on that edge of fifth to fourth place right now. Okay, well, some, some harsh criticisms there. Uh, I can tell you're passionate about this one. Uh, fun fact, Reptar, you know, one of the players from Gnomes is in a call with us. He's just listening and he's not actually speaking. He's but, making um, breakfast. He's making anything to say, Reptar? Well, You're being called out right now. Yeah. Uh, 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 I, he unmuted? Uh, hey, guys. This is uh, Hi. Reptar speaking. Um, I'm in the middle of making some bacon. Um, Hell yeah. Okay. You should uh, share some with <laughs> us. We got some real meaty comments coming from fellow over here. Meatier than my bacon, I could say. <laughs> um... <laughs> Yeah, that game was a 4v5, and uh, I definitely could tell during it there was there wasn't as much, you know, teamwork and pressure that was going on on our side, and obviously that was a 4v5 at the end. Um, and I, I can tell you personally, there was some very uh, heated moments, uh, particularly with Scooge, sadly, <laughs> for some things going on. Mm -hmm. So I, I definitely think if it were... If it were the fact that Ghetto didn't leave, I feel like that would probably have been in the hands of of YY. I do I do agree with Fell a lot. There's a lot of uh, molding and change that's trying to be done on gnomes. That's the real question is if we can pull it off or not. But I'm confident in my team. I'm I'm ready to be by their side. Okay, well, um thank I'll you for those insights. Before we move on to the next match, EK, any thoughts on that one? You've been hella quiet so far. Gnomes versus Yakuza, man. I don't yes. know. <laughs> I guess it's. Okay. I mean, I had expected Yakuza to win, but I guess since because of that four v five, they just didn't have enough manpower to close it out. But yeah, that's all I gotta say. Okay. Uh, well, and since we have Reptar here, you know the next match is the the one that I've been really wanting to talk about, and it's LCG versus Gnomes, and it was a seven two for uh, not Gnomes, like many of us predicted pregame was a seven two. For LCG, so the Europeans prevailed. And um, if you guys remember, when we did the first iteration of this recap show, uh, Toxic was in chat, and he was like, there you go, it's it was, it's on screen. So he, he pulled it up. Toxic was in chat of this recap when he first did it, and he said, time to maybe upset, I don't know. And um, they were playing Rise and Gnomes this week, which was, you know, pretty hard matches somehow, though. They still pulled up ahead with a seven and two on gnome. So again, fellow, give me your thoughts, and then Reptar, give me your thoughts since you're still here, and then EK, give me your thoughts as well. Well, there's a couple of red flags I gotta say off the bat. Firstly, Reptar not being in like the top two or top three, control actually out damaging him and sleep. Uh, that either shows. I think we had a small discussion about this, especially in terms of snipers. That's either A, your team isn't enabling you enough to do your job as a sniper most of these rounds, or B, you're just not hitting your shots. And based on just damage alone, 
it might actually be the latter for once, which is hard to believe because Reptar just, he just lands some nasty shots most of the time. We saw him pop off, I believe, in the losers' finals of the winter major against like GB and really gave him a run for their money a lot of matches, even when EK came back from playing in a hotel. And then also, you look at the bottom guy, you look at Sleep, the newest player of the gnomes. I was going to make this uh, question before to Reptar. But since we have another game to discuss, I really want to have your thoughts on sleep because there's been a lot of people saying that maybe he's not up to the plate for being an upper league. Maybe he's not a good addition to the gnomes and coming from a person who's actually on the team, who scrims with them, who talks with everybody quite constantly because, you know, you're on their damn team. I, I want to hear your two cents on the matter because you would know best uh, about sleep in general and if he is meant to be on the gnomes. Okay. Uh, talking about Reptar? Well, I was, yeah, but uh, <laughs> I think he's, I, I think now, he's I really guess. focusing on the bacon. He's really yeah, focusing he on put the bacon. I'm so sorry. Oh, I forgot that I, I muted myself on my computer. <laughs> I thought I was ready to go at any moment. You're I good. You're not. good. You're good. <laughs> um, it happens. Yes, the bacon okay. is smelling quite good. Okay, back to the comment. What I was saying, fellow, is that it's a great question to ask. And honestly, is something that I've been discussing with the rest of the team as well. Um, sleep really came in strong with us initially, and we had a lot of pretty much a, a, a lot of aspiration, a lot of kind of ideas in our head that he was going to come in and be a really good fragger and good pressure in the team. But through these recent games, he's definitely been having some trouble. So I don't know what's going on with sleep. It's it's hard to tell. Uh, the mostly the consensus is right now is that something about either the way we play and playing with us is uncomfortable. Or something about just the momentum of due process and the way matches go is uncomfortable for him at the moment. Uh, honestly, I think the guy's a great player. I, I, I have aspirations for what he can do. I think it just needs some time to develop, but only time will tell. Okay, well, solid answer. EK, your thoughts on the 7-2? Oh. Well, it looks like Sleep was sleep in that game. It's uh... Oh! Okay. Oh yeah, but yeah. <laughs> I I think Okay. Oh, good job for LCG for just coming up. And they're able to take a round off gnomes, which is historically usually people would bet on LC or on gnomes there. Um Absolutely. But yeah, that was a good upset. Good job Toxic for following the script. Predicting I guess. it? Yeah, yeah I don't know. Them. Someone yeah. leaked it to him a week early, man. I don't know. Um That was probably me. He, he has a friend on the writer's department for DPL, apparently. Uh, next match, Global Breakout versus Bingus, and it was a forfeit, right? Yeah. <laughs> yes. Uh, we can, we can kind of give a, a little bit of insight to that. So um, I don't know if anyone in the DPL community is actually aware of this uh, game. It's actually been kind of like uh, showing up out of nowhere. I believe it's called Destiny 2. Uh, there's, there's an interesting event that happens every now and again called a raid, and... Um, well, it's such an important event in the game that we had a lot of people actually on both the gnomes and or not gnomes, sorry, on GB and Bingus. I, I could probably assume some people on the gnomes were probably playing the raid too, but there were just so many people on Bingus that just wanted to play Destiny 2 and just could not be bothered to play against GB. They just straight up forfeited and then GB proceeded to also play in the raid and i think at one point josh one of the players on bingus was actually playing with global breakout in their discord for the destiny 2 raid so there's the little the insight behind why uh we didn't have a match between bingus and global breakout we also had gravy uh have to go do a, a couple of uh weekend stuff for uh i, I believe it is the guard actually that, that he's in so that that was kind of cool as well to talk to him about as well um but besides that, yeah, Bingus just did not have enough players, so they had to forfeit. But the reasoning behind it was uh, just so funny. I, I had to bring it up. <laughs> okay, so it really should have been a draw if everyone was playing Destiny. Um, but for real, okay, uh, I, I think this is it, right? EK, you have any? Well, I was going to say, you know, as, okay, you can as a GB that player. GB was going to play Destiny. Oh, well, we were all there. We were just waiting on Bingus to show up. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I, I know, I know. I just okay. said you guys then also proceeded to play Destiny 2 after the match was yeah, forfeit. Maybe maybe true. my wording made it seem a bit different. So for that, I apologize. But I, I you know, I should have been a bit more concise. But at least we have you to, to tell the full truth, of course. So that's I, good. I, I call bullshit 
Maybe EK. <laughs> I can do that with EK. But the rest of the boys? Oh, no. They wanted to play Destiny. Fuck you. <laughs> yeah, of course they wanted to play Destiny. Hey, hey, language. Them. Yeah, but EK would have EK would have just put his foot down and been like, all right, guys, we actually have to play the game. Then we'll go we'll go back and raid. Or maybe even, like, worst case scenario, a reschedule. But uh, besides that, yeah, the game did not happen. Uh, unfortunately, but I, it still would have been a good game. Uh, and I think at some point for for playoffs, we'll have to see these two clash it out. So it'll be a it'll be a match to remember. I can almost guarantee that. But Boxy, why don't you tell us about the very last and hopefully not very least game uh, between Big Okay, and well, uh, before you just kind of shoved me along. Now I was just gonna comment about how <laughs> global well, you can comment too. We've got time. Bingus, you know. Uh, matches are at least like currently they're ranked number one and number two, right? And it would have been like yep. such a great match if it actually happened, but darn it, yeah, destiny, absolutely. I guess. Um, so <laughs> that kind of is unfortunate. I was really looking forward to that match, and I feel like you know, global breakout on paper, they are in top. Bingus really couldn't could have given them a run for their money. Uh, so my heart aches to find out this was the reason that a forfeit happened, but it is what it is, and like you said. Last match of week two was LCG versus Bingus. Three to seven with Bingus winning it out in the end. So a little bit more expected, right? Yeah, I, I would say so. I mean, we had everyone perform well by Bingus except for their like last minute sub because once again, Gravy was just not home. Also, also Cringler actually too was there, but he actually performed very well. So at least uh, one of their subs performed in a good manner and everyone else just played very consistently in their own department so i mean yeah just a very straightforward match that we expected to uh have as a win but still having lcg get a decent amount of rounds they were in that mid area of like seven three seven four seven five better than just getting demolished uh seven to like oh through seven two so at least there was some sort of retaliation. But I wonder if LCG would be able to do the exact same thing if we had the full roster of Bingus as well. Um, I feel like they'd still get at least a round against them. But just, you know, something to mention is, like I like I said earlier, the fact there were two subs on the side of Bingus, they weren't at their fullest potential. Maybe that had something to do with LCG taking a couple of rounds. But I, I guess we'll never know, I suppose, right? I guess so. Um, well, EK? Oh, I'm looking at the stat sheet. And why is Daya? Why is Daya on there? That doesn't uh, make any sense to know. me. He's not on the roster. <laughs> but anyways. oh no, oh no! <laughs> they might have put him on the roster to have him sub, and then they Maybe. might have taken him immediately off. Yeah. I think that's probably what happened because because like I mentioned, they needed subs desperately because both Josh and Gravy couldn't play, so they just they had to find somebody to get him on their roster and whatnot. Yeah. But they well, they knew that they wouldn't be there like well in advance. So yeah, I do think this is interesting because it's not a top tier lineup for Bingus, but they still were able to take it on LCG. I think it just shows that LCG they just need to get better. I think um, Bingus. They, I mean, I feel like with that lineup, they should have been able to at least push it close to like seven five for LCG at least, and then. But mm -hmm. I think I don't know. I think LCG just needs to put a little bit more time in, and then they'll be a lot more consistent team in general. Okay. But yeah. Oh, okay. Well, this is it for uh, this is it for week two matches. So let's take a look at the coin scoreboard and discuss that a little bit. Then we're gonna take a look at uh, today's matches, and then we're gonna you know kind of dive into the possibilities of the outcomes that we have ahead of us. Depending on lower. what, what about the lower how it maybe? goes. Oh, we still have lower to go. That's that's correct. Yeah, actually. I think we can go talk about standing. Sorry, there's a bug in my yes. room, and I caught him, so that's good. Um, yeah, well, we will take a look at lower league, and then we'll probably go back to standings to wrap it up because then that's kind of like our our, our like half-assed uh, power cool. rankings. Yeah. Uh, I, I forgot a then, lower league is a thing. I'm not gonna dang, lie to you, but ego. well, you haven't been here for a long time, so that's okay. We we get that's that. True. Everyone happens. forgot about have the things too apparently okay yeah, yeah. so lower league one. time lower yeah. league time okay 
So now you've got 7 0 by Nakudama. And again, I haven't seen the match. I just, I'm just, you know, going off the score here. We've seen Snakes with a surprisingly strong showing on week one. So the fact that they still got 7 0 by Nakudama, who, yes, are the absolute favorites. Um, it's still surprising to me just because Snakes have kind of established themselves as a really solid, you know, second team in the lower league on week one. Definitely interesting to me. But again, you guys can probably provide some more insights. Yeah, I definitely get a touch for Snakes. They just have not been able to find like a consistent five roster for the entire league. So when they actually play up against teams that have that consistent five people most of the time, they just, they crumble. It's not even up for Again. debate. And I unfortunately hate to say this, but I don't know how long Snakes is going to last because of the fact they just, they cannot find people to consistently either sub or play for their main roster. And it sucks because they, they've got some good people like Doshik when he's in a full five team aspect and he can like play to how he wants to, he does relatively well stat wise. So it, it, it definitely does suck to see a team that had a lot of good aspirations kind of fall to the back line but it just you know it happens such as life you can't always find people that can commit this much time to a game that really hasn't taken off yet so i mean you you, you kind of have to understand it to that to that degree but yeah that's just one of the reasons why it's uh why the 7-0 is just uh very different from what we probably saw earlier in the week even though it was the exact same problems uh, for snakes they were literally like scrambling to find a fifth player while we were talking about them in the upper league actually i think too yeah um i think they should just pick you and i up i think we would tear it up in a in lower league who would be amazing well, i thought they wanted to get somebody who like wouldn't bottom damage deal and i think they already have a sniper so that's like uh, that's like our two quirks like god i mean we could bait I mean, for each other still like we do in we 10 minutes that would work other. we're, we're yeah, amazing <laughs> we'll find a way we'll make it work the synergy <laughs> is there okay uh ek snakes oh, nakadama I mean, I mean snakes yeah they've uh, first week they had four players, but they still were able to win. I think both their matches, uh, regardless. And but now you can see right now in bot stuff, they're they have three players, so <laughs> it's uh, yep. gonna be hard for them. Um, I'm not sure what's gonna happen in the future for them. Yeah, hopefully they can at least get two more for you know tomorrow. Wait, tomorrow is lower league is still being played, right? Or yeah. Is that it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, lower league is still being played. Okay. Uh Okay, second match. Rev Sport International versus Organized Chaos. 7-1 seven, uh, seven, for Organized Chaos. And fellow, you and I have casted both teams on week one in different matchups. I think both teams, when we casted them, actually went up against SR, right? Um, uh, yes, that, that was for Rev International, yeah. Yeah. So, um, and OC, yeah. I didn't expect Organized Chaos to, to be this dominant. I gotta say, I'm positively surprised. I think they... Probably, you know, off the scoreline, also had their main roster play. Um, excuse my camera doing things. That is just a, a thing that happens. But, uh, you know, I know a lot of a lot of the people from the team. I know you do too, fellow and UEK. Um, so I'm, I'm glad they're doing as well as they are in the lower league. What do you think? Uh, especially for organized chaos, like they actively scrim. They're they're trying to work on the problems that they have. They they receive help via coaching. I, I know Dalton has helped them do that a couple times, and he's he's pretty like smart about the game, and he's willing to help pretty much anybody if you ask him for it. So that's always nice to see. Um, so they they've been slowly improving, and you know, playing up against other teams that are kind of bad, like Space Rangers, for example. Um, so if that makes sense, uh, Rev Rev Sports. Uh, one thing I, I really needed to like note about them, they have just louie that does anything most of the time and that's it like i swear to god they're just filled with a bunch of baiters like they, I, they really just are not good like it's it's hard to sugarcoat it oh, wow. especially when we cast their games like there were so many rounds where their positioning was just it was so bad and then louie would run in get like two picks or like three picks and then die and then like the game the round was just over because they killed louie like that's just that's that's how i sum it up and it also sucks because Louis in like a position where it's like, well, I either play to deal damage or I play to be a helpful, like basically leader. He can't do both. So yeah, it's it just, it you, just you pick between that. the lesser of two evils at that point. But like they, they, they got to up their game up by a lot because uh, Rev International, I think I can go look at their like entire standings in a second. It's just, uh, I need to go all the way through lower league and see what that's like. Yeah, they are for them, seventh I'm right sure. now. They have not won a single game. 
they have had a draw, two losses, and then a a null match, which I think is being rescheduled or it's just uh, happening at a later time. I, I, I honestly don't know. Yeah. Um, I mean, so I just kind of want to add one thing before we hand it off to EK, and that's um, that I, I don't think they're necessarily bad players. I think they're severely under-experienced players or inexperienced players, rather. And I think, you oh, yeah, know, playing the yeah. league being a competitive setting is exactly why they're there. So I... I don't know. I I don't want to I don't want to harp on them. I I think it's, you know, great that they are working on their stuff, but like you like you said, you can tell that, you know, Luis just kind of used and made for a higher level of play and he can't carry and lead at the same time or frag and lead at the same time, so it's like kind of a trade-off and it's like which one are you going to pick? Again, I don't think the players are bad. They're just really inexperienced if they can work out They're their new. king. Yeah. I think, yeah, they could do much better. There's no point in harping on them for, you know, just picking up the game. Okay, you have your hand up. What's up? Go ahead. Yeah, that that that's honestly on me. I forgot that they have a lot of, like, you know, 50 match, 40 match people. I, I think I remember I actually brought that up last week, but it just it must have went out of my head pretty much the, mi the minute I, I noticed it. So that that's a good point. Maybe if we give them more time, they'll improve a lot more just because they've, they've played the game for longer. But I, I hate for cutting off your... Uh, your time to talk, EK. So I guess I'll just I'll hand it over to you instead of Boxy uh, having that happen. Yep. Uh, I mean, I haven't really seen RevSquare play at all. Uh, Organized Chaos, I know them. Uh, I think pretty steady team. That's all I gotta say. Okay. Well, short and sweet like always, EK. Um, next up was Due Process Baddies versus Frog. Seven to five to the Baddies. I think. This one kind of was, <coughs> excuse me, um, COVID kicking my ass right now. By the way, um, I think I'm, I think I'm looking surprisingly well given the fact that I couldn't even stand up yesterday. But um, seven to five for due process baddies. I or seven, to, yeah, seven to five. So I think much closer than I expected. I don't know about you guys. I I would have you know thought that it would be like seven to three, maybe seven to four for due process baddies. <laughs> But Frogs almost drew it, so props to them, I guess. You know, it's uh, it's funny how this match kind of played out too, because it was at the at the beginning, it was like four to one, I think, favoring Frogs, and then just something happened. Uh, the mental got shocked. Uh, that's like one of the biggest problems for Frogs as well. They have a really bad like mental game. It is just that's something that that kind of happens in time, especially with newer teams. Is like if if you cannot remain mentally headstrong, you are just bound to lose no matter what team you're playing. And uh, a DPB kind of kind of took advantage of that fully, and that's one of the main reasons how they're able to come back. Also, you take a look at like the older teams of due process dpb is kind of one of them especially like because they've been pl they played in the winter major i think at one point i think they played before that too like they they have that coordination and like the the communication well enough to beat teams like frogs for example them and nakadama are the top two teams in lower league for one of basically that main reason because they've had the same main five constantly as frogs they are picking up new players by the minute and they are still kind of figuring out what roles they are putting themselves into, what they need to do on those roles, for example, and how they need to communicate and coordinate uh, in order to actually play those roles properly. But, you know, still good on them for almost beating and almost tying against one of the best teams in the lower league. That's still not a bad stat line at all. So I think them being in fourth right now in general standings, I think that makes like really good sense overall. And maybe when we see them... Uh, in playoffs for lower league, maybe they could uh, have a couple upsets favoring them. You never know. Okay, EK. Um, I, I, both teams are relatively new. Uh, I know frogs are still working out their kinks. Uh, Deep process baddies. They just play a bunch of casuals, so I'm not sure too much of how how much effort or practice they're putting in. But I do know that game uh, had like five pauses, so I don't know how that affects the gameplay because like. You, if you pause like after every round, how are you going to keep that momentum going? How are you going to stay in the game? Sort of like that. So I don't know. That game is kind of a weird, weird one for me. Yeah, yeah. pausing every round definitely s interesting. Sorry, what were you gonna say? Oh, I was just gonna say yeah. That's uh, I don't know. Uh, I guess due process baddies do do. I was expecting them to win. Uh, probably. In, by a much more larger margin, but 
Frogs are able to do a lot and get a lot of rounds. Good on them. Okay. I 17. Do. Oh? I okay. do have some information to put in, at least, about frogs and do process baddies. I do think it's kind of right. nice how close that game was because, from at least my perspective, I've seen players from both frogs and do process baddies put in a decent amount of time in 10 mans as well, which, if I remember earlier hearing at least from fellows like that's and also i agree with this it's like that's the place to really you know get yourself acquainted with this league and its players yeah. and how to play so just from that i'm like that's amazing keep on doing that and you'll keep on doing even better and better every time and yeah final okay. thing i'm not too surprised i kind of agree with Kazo dpb I, I don't know if i could say that it's like a tongue twister do process baddies um Definitely were the ones that I was thinking we were going to win, just because they have more experience on their side. I know they have midship, if I remember correctly. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not going to say much on that, but as much <laughs> as I will say is that that's extra experience they have with the game. So, Okay, Everything well, lined up. thank you for that, our unannounced and uninvited analyst. Um, we'll, we'll wrap back to you later on. 17S versus Space Ranger, 17... S1722. I honestly don't know 17 too much. Um, I've only casted Space Rangers twice. I know Tetra's on the team, but then my knowledge of either of them kind of stops. Yes, we've casted them a few times. Um, but other than that, I don't know. Space Rangers looked okay-ish on week one. I think they... Um, I know they lost the first one that we casted. I can't remember what happened in the second one, fellow. They won a single. It was either a draw or a seven at five. So it was they were they were doing relatively okay. The fact that they lost seven at two now is slightly surprising to me. But what do you guys think? Their only non-loss was a six-six against uh, Rev, who, like we talked about earlier, have uh, fifty matches, twenty matches, forty matches, and then a single one K yeah. match guy okay. of Louis. So uh, that's that's how you set the tone for how this match probably went. Uh, I talk about Space Rangers a lot, how they make the same mistake every single play day and just refuse to change. And uh, finally, we actually uh, have some change being made in the background for them. We'll probably uh, discuss that more, but uh, just some small insider information. They are trialing new people. A couple of uh, players have actually dropped for a new team uh, in the lower oh. league. So... We'll discuss yeah, yeah. that uh, a bit later uh, in the day. Before we go to power rankings, I'll, I'll mention the two new teams that are being picked up for the lower league that we can uh, mention just briefly. But yeah, uh, 17s, I, I always forget that their team roster as well. They have such a very odd name. It's hard for me to like um, visualize them, but I know they, they can play in a consistent manner. We might actually have the... Uh, the players stack up there for that? Oh no, it's just we're, we're going back to the the oh, matchups once again. Well, I appreciate this. This uh, okay. Did we just uh? Oh, this oh, is last wait. week's matches. Yeah, this was a. Oh, that's what the There's... dash means. You get a buy. Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. So the only the only win they technically got was a buy, but that doesn't really. That oh isn't well. Really, like good. <laughs> it is what? what it is. Well, we have. Five more matches to go through. Number one, Nakudama versus Rev72. Again, you know, Nakudama are kind of cementing themselves as the top team in the lower league. And I know Argo's cringing right now. He's listening. Mm -hmm. But it is what it is. Nakudama are winning their matches. Mm -hmm. So, you know, there is... It's just undisputable. Uh, Rev Sports, well, we've talked about them. We've talked about how Louis is experienced, but he can really not do everything by himself. Um... So I'm just glad that Rev are gaining the experience like we've mentioned before. Um, but now Kodama, they are looking very likely to win this whole thing. Um, again, you guys saw the match, so probably some more analysis coming out from you guys. I mean, yeah, this they are just uh, the probably the best team inside the lower league. That's like without question. They they did all right in uh in upper league so I i'm honestly interested to see how well they do if they win the whole thing during relegation and move up a bracket i think that actually be pretty cool uh, mm -hmm. I, I talk with some of the people on nakodama i know don boy is looking to be a caster so that's always interesting as well maybe he will uh inadvertently use that to get more info on his opponents perhaps i, I really doubt it's, mm -hmm. it's that deep of a that deep of a commitment he probably just wants to learn how to cast i think it's cool to do that um surf run uh 
kind of chill to vibe with. I know Argo, like you mentioned, probably screaming, oh my god, Nakadama players, how could you say that, fellow? Well, you know, they're they're actually Kwakudama now, so it's like it's like a whole new team. You just uh, you wouldn't understand. So uh, that is my my reasoning behind that. But yeah, they're just they're a good team. Like there's no other way to put it, and I think they definitely deserve upper league division uh, to see how well they do now. I think it'd be pretty cool. Oh, I think we just gave Argo a stroke, but uh, EK. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I was gonna say, like Nagudama, it's just skill diff, bro. It's just they are the team in lower league that just have the most knowledge of the mechanics of the game. They know they know how the game works the most, and I think that's what separates them from the rest of the lower league. It's just they have a great, good good understanding of the game, and not particularly strat wise that they're the best, but like just having the ability to know how to shoot, what to barb, and yep. all that type of stuff is good yeah i mean the core of uh nakudama has been together for quite a while they've played you know the major they've played some other competitions and um you can just tell they're way more experienced and their experience is from a much higher level than all of the other teams so i mean go even going into lower league it was probably a no-brainer to pick them they were like a very safe pick if you were looking for some favorites and they're solidifying upon that. They are, you know, they are winning it out. They're the only undefeated team so far. So we'll see. We'll see if they can keep it up. But I am kind of confident that they can. Okay. Uh, next one up is Snakes versus Frogs. And Frogs got their win. It was a 7-2. Again, we've already touched upon why Snakes aren't performing as much as they, you know, should be. They were playing really well in week one and then completely fell off due to all of those roster changes. I don't even... We, we kind of got to get going here. So I'm just going to kind of go through oh, these. Yeah, and we'll if you guys running. have some more insights, just let me know and be like, hey, want to stop here. So, yeah. Uh, next one up was Organized Chaos 17S. Again, Organized Chaos just, I think they were playing with their main roster. They probably had Keegan. Uh, Keisha has also been really good on those snipers when Keegan isn't around. So they have plenty of fragging power. We've just seen them do really well. Next up, two process baddies versus Orange Grove. Again, 7 to 1. Orange Grove, I think, are. Just like Rev Sports, a bunch of very inexperienced people that just, you know, kind of came together, said, hey, let's play. I don't even think most of them knew each other before going into these matches. They were just kind of a random pickup stack. And so, again, we've mentioned due process bad is, you know, led by Mitchie. They've been doing pretty well in the lower league. I think they're currently second on the scoreboard. So it makes sense that the score was the way it was. And then Space Rangers, well, they got their win, but sadly it was a bye win. A win nonetheless, though. I think what we do here, quickly, very quickly, we look at the scoreboard for lower league, and then we go back onto upper league, we look at today's matches, we look at scoreboard, and then we discuss on what can happen with today's results. What do you guys think? Yeah, yeah. Well, for yeah, uh, yeah. today's game, you said? Today's Sorry? matches, or the standings today's when matches. we're going into the matches? Oh. Oh, we're, well, we're, ju matches. we're just doing this. There we go, yeah. Right. Uh we're I mean, I mean, for for we'll just oh, we'll we'll talk about standings real quick of of what we see right now. I mean, this yeah. this all makes sense. Um, you know, the top four teams. I I think I think this will just stay the way it is. Like we'll have Nakadama and DPB top two probably going to Rel. We might see an upset depending on who plays who. Like it might be it might be Nakadama versus like Frogs based on seeding. If if like that whole like you know playoff match kind of happens i'm not too sure what will go down because i think it's like everyone else in the bottom area of lower league that play against each other in their own playoff and then whoever wins like those gets to play against the other two teams uh so i, I really don't know how that's going to entail but i just think that like frogs and oc when they do play in those playoffs they'll probably be the top two teams that like kind of battle through the the trenches so to speak to try to yeah. face nakodama and dpb again i mean I think the one team that could kind of surprise and climb a little bit higher is 17S because they went five versus seven. They were so close. They were one round away from, you know, drawing it out with due process baddies. Um, they beat Space Ranger 72. It was very convincing. Although they did also get 7-1 by Organized Chaos. But I think if there's one team that will kind of change their standings, I do think it's 17S. I think they could climb up above Snakes and potentially maybe even Frogs. It really depends on Frog's consistency, though. So um, I guess we'll see about that one. 
And uh, while we go move over the uh, the week three matches very quickly, because uh, technically there is only five minutes until we actually get the show underway for the uh, the main <laughs> season, uh, oh, we gosh. will go and or at least I will go and talk about the uh, two new teams, which are actually shown in the week three matches. We have Hostig and also Mollus Munchers. So Hostig, they have players. some people from uh, from Space Rangers, actually, and probably some of the players that you would not expect to be picked up by a new team. I'll just say that much and uh, leave it there. Oh. So. Very oh. questionable start for them. Oh, uh, but I, I'm, okay. I'm hoping I'm hoping they prove me wrong. You know, I'm I'm really hoping they prove me wrong. And then Moss Munchers, I actually don't know who is on their team because I've never heard of them until I saw them join uh, today for their match up against Hostig. So you know what? I think if that match gets streamed in any manner, I um I'll be watching it. I can almost guarantee that. Maybe maybe cast it depending if it's actually put up here in in DPL or not. But I don't know if we'll do that. <laughs> Well, we'll cross that bridge when we get to it. EK, yeah. you want to go over these matches really fast so um you get some more air time and then we move on to upper standings. I mean, I don't real fast. Don't know. Blitz don't, through them. I don't really have anything to say about those matches. I just we'll see what happens. Yeah. Um, I think Space I mean, Rangers and Oren Grove is going to be funny. I think that's going to be uh, a very funny game. It's going to be a funny game. The the two to really look out for is OC versus Nakadama. Both teams have yes. proven that they can be very com competent. And the second one that, again, at least to me, is interesting on paper is Frogs versus 17. Acid could, again, go either way. And it will affect the standings quite a lot as well. Okay, because 17, as they've had a bunch of close losses i think only one win so far but they've been you know barely losing out against good teams so far if you um kind of take out that one one to seven they had versus organized chaos so i think if 17s win today against frogs i think they could like i said climb up surprises a little bit but organized chaos versus nakudama that is going to be a really good one so definitely make sure to watch that one okay are we done any closing thoughts on these because we need to move on to the standings from upper league and on to the base matches actually let's do those first yeah we'll uh we'll take a look at the uh the, the games for today to, because I think and, a lot of them are actually mildly important, and then yeah, power rankings, of course, to uh to end the end the day. We only have three matches in upper league, though. It's going to be Akuza versus LCG, which is probably the most important matchup. And that's going to be the first one on the drawing board today. Then Bingus versus Rise, and then finally Gnomes versus GB. So we we've talked about Rise beforehand. That one is going to be like a very straightforward game. Bingus are probably going to stomp. We have seen two rounds total. That have been a win for Rise. That is it in the entire upper league. So it's probably not going to really improve that much. I doubt we'll see an upset against them. I, I hate to be so so brutal about it, but that's just the honest truth. Uh, Gnomes VGB. Uh, again, they, they, Gnomes still have like a, a bunch of issues they're trying to resolve. Having a new player try to fill in a very big role of that main fragger of Mace. It's just something that will get you know fixed in due time. I'm not too uh. sure if today is going to be that day where it happens, but you know we have seen upsets for gnomes winning against GB in the past, so maybe today that could be the case too. But uh, you know, I'll, I'll wait and see if that happens. And then of course the uh, the first match of YY versus LCG, this is probably going to be the most important matchup and probably the closest one because whoever wins this, uh, you mentioned this earlier, Boxy, during our pre-show, uh, that they will get. I'll third, dive into this later we'll, uh, on. Yeah, yeah, that they it, will it get. It also third. depends on the other game a little bit. So we're yeah, we can actually bring yet. it up during the broadcast too, actually, because we are the ones casting it too. But whoever wins this is uh, going to really set the tone uh, for the rest mm -hmm. of playoffs and like upper seeding as well. Maybe not second and first place seeding, but like third and fourth, which is still very important because now you don't have to fight for relegation if you get put there. Yep. Okay. EK, any thoughts on today's matches? Uh, I don't think it's gonna uh, be a very exciting day for DPO Upper League. Okay, but... party pooper. Okay. I don't know. That's just what I got. I see you. Oh. I see you. Okay. Well, Upper League. Let's look at the current standings, which is, I think, really interesting. Number one, we have Global Breakout, which is, I think, a surprise to no one. They are already locked in place one, even if Bingus win today and Global Breakout loses. There's no way of closing that three-point gap because there's only one match per team happening today. So Global Breakout, absolutely 100% confirmed for the first spot. They've also won all four of their matches. No draws, no losses, no forfeits. Go figure. They um, won a total of 28 rounds, lost six. You know, trade team. 
On the flip side, we have Rise, who is confirmed to be going to relegations. Out of the four matches they played, they've lost all four, like Fallow mentioned multiple times throughout the day. They have only won two sing two lowly rounds, excuse me, and lost 28. So, you know, uh, on the bright side, if you look at everyone else's uh, rounds won, because Rise are so low, literally everyone else in the league is positive on their total rounds or total round differential. So uh, thank you, Rise, for making everyone else look better, I guess. Um, but here's where the interesting stuff happens. So first up, like we said, Bingus versus Rise. Let's just assume that Bingus wins. There is Doodler, by the way, 10 minutes ago, one of the Bingus players. He told me that he would be eating shoes live on stream if uh, Rise beats them today. And, Ooh, you know, okay. with, uh, yeah, with how Rise has been doing previously, I think this is just the one match that we don't even, you know, say what if somehow Rise wins. We just we just say Bingus wins for sure, which means they lock themselves in second place. And then if Global Breakout beats Gnomes and if Yakuza and if Yakuza doesn't win against LCG, then Yakuza goes to relegations. If Yakuza wins, then it's a tiebreaker match for uh between LCG and Gnomes, with Yakuza coming in third, if I'm not mistaken. If somehow, again, very unlikely, Global Breakout loses to Gnomes, then Gnomes set themselves up at six points. And then it depends on the score of the first one, but it's probably going to be Yakuza going into relegations. So, like you said, fellow, the first match, extremely important. The other two are pretty much already set in stone. There is this very slight possibility that, you know, Gnome somehow beat or even tie Global Breakout, but I just don't see that happening. So, again, the first match is pretty, pretty much going to decide who is going to uh, relegations with Rise. What do you guys think, though? Because we do need to start wrapping it up. Well, I think we are almost ready, yeah, to uh, start uh, getting the first matchup of the day over and out with. But yeah, I think the LCG Yakuza going to be the best game of the day. Um, all all the rankings here really make sense. Um, honestly, uh, I, I, I'm really concerned here for the no, especially if YY win, because that, that does boot them down uh, against LCG. And then especially if the gnomes don't win their game too, a lot is uh, on the line for the gnomes in particular. Because like I said, I don't think they really want to deal with relegation. Uh, so if they you know, don't have a really good set of, of matches today, that's going to happen whether they like it or not. Mm -hmm. mm. Okay. We good? So I, I think, think we're so. good. Oh. Um, thank you everyone Addictions. for joining in. Oh, EK already sighed. He just did. Oh, I'm finally done. But I EK, you're not done yet though. We have our predictions. That is right. I forgot but to do this. You forgot the forgoer. Anyways, it happens. Uh, well, while EK sets up predictions, what we're going to do here is we're going to minute break to get the players the lobbies ready. Fellow and I, we're going to stay in the casting booth. EK sadly going to have to turn off his beautiful camera, his beautiful face. He's going to move up Sad. into production. And, you know, it's going to be the three of us staying with you for Yakuza versus LCG before we hand it off to other people for Bingus versus Rise and then Gnomes versus Global Breakout. So we'll see you in about... Don't go anywhere. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs>